Hey, what's up guys? I just got off an insane webinar where I dropped some of my best verbal game tips that I've ever put out, plus some crazy infield. Uh, and everybody was asking me if I would replay this webinar, so I'm gonna put it up, share it with you guys so as many people can see it as possible. So check it out, I'm gonna show it to you in a second. I also wanna tell you, stay tuned, because at the very end, I have a very special surprise for you. So check out the webinar, enjoy and learn lots. Hey guys, what's up? Good to see a lot of you already in the room here. Um, I'm gonna do a quick little can you hear me just to make sure everything's all good. Um, it'll probably be about 30 seconds um, for that to, uh, to kick in that you guys can actually hear and see me. Um, but um, as soon as I'm aware that you guys can, I will get started up for you guys. Um, yes, you guys can see me? All right, nice, that's awesome. All right, so today we are going to go into some crazy depth about verbal game. I'm gonna to talk to you about the typical uh, concepts that are taught in verbal game and what's good about them, what's bad about them, um, where we can improve on them and, and do even better perhaps. Um, and then I'm going to show you my brand new model of, not brand new to me, but brand new showing it to the world, um, model of a verbal game that I use, um, which, in my opinion, in my experience, corrects a lot of these common problems that, that people do have in their verbal game. Um, and probably is the biggest difference between intermediate and advanced guys uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, so we'll get into all of that uh, very, very quickly. I'm going to show you guys some infield. I have three very good specific infield clips that are going to illustrate the verbal game model. Um, and then I have something very special for you guys at the end. Um, if you guys have ever been on my webinars before, you know that I always have something very special. So you want to stick around to the end um for exactly that okay um all right um now that i think we probably have uh, most of you on here um let's crack into some of the content this is, a, this is gonna be extremely content dense guys there's a lot to cover um i'm gonna try and i'm gonna try and keep it relatively short um but that means i'm gonna have to go through it pretty quick so i'm gonna go very very quickly through it and then at the end um i'm gonna take all your questions whatever is on your mind that sort of stuff and make sure that we've covered pretty much um, all the ins and outs of it, okay? Uh, so with that said, let's get started into the material. All right. Uh, how to always say the right thing event. Like I said, what's in the training? Uh, first of all, I'm gonna talk to you about what are the flaws in the current standard uh, game model, how it is taught. Um, my theory, what I call her-based verbal game, verbal game based on the girl in front of you. Talk to you about, about, about how to safely bring up sex in your interactions so that you don't have to worry about your escalation. You don't have to worry about um, anything else that's, that's going on in terms of that. You don't have to um, think you're overstepping or going too far or whatever. Um, how to go from small talk to a kiss. I'll show you an infield example of that. And then I'll show you how to set the frame specifically a lot of guys ask me about lover versus provider, how to set that frame. Um, I'm going to show you an example of how I set the lover frame, even though I'm specifically talking about money and success. So it's a thing that a lot of guys would think is very provider. So that's what I'm going to show you guys today. Um, but first, before we get into that, I want to ask you guys, um, what are some of your big, biggest verbal game issues? Um, specifically, I want to know, and I'm going to, I'm going to be looking in on the webinar while, while I see this, um, how many of you don't know what to say? Maybe give me a one if you don't know what to say, and that's that's a big thing you run into. Um, if you're scared to show intent verbally, give me a two. Uh, if you don't know what topics to choose, like what to talk about, or you don't have any verbal game plan for moving things forward, uh, give me a three. Um, if you don't know how much to escalate verbally, um, let's do four. Uh, if you, excuse me, if you you get a lot of shit tests or rejections when you show intent, give me a five. And then if your interactions are good at first, like you start off and things go well, but then it goes flat later, it gets boring or she, she seems to lose attraction, those kind of things. Okay, cool, I see lots of numbers coming up, that's awesome. That's really good, okay, cool. Good, good. Um, so the interaction is good at first, go ahead, good stuff. All right, uh, it's good to see you guys are having a lot of these issues. That means that the stuff we're gonna cover is going to be very, very much on point for you. And I found these are a lot of the most common things that guys do run into, which is why I brought them all up. Cool, all right. Um, so how many of you have ever heard the phrase, what you say doesn't matter, right? It's a very, very common thing that's taught in game, and I think it's very problematic, um, because what you say obviously does matter. 
right? In fact, it matters like so much that, that most guys, when they get into game, are obsessed with it because they just realize, oh, it's all about what do I say? What do I say? How do I have the right thing to say? Um, and that's the exact reason why guys that are teaching pickup teach that it doesn't matter. It does matter, but the problem is if you're too worried about what you're saying, especially when you're a newbie, um, when you're kind of lost and confused, you're going to be so worried about it that you're going to freeze up or you're not going to be able to say anything at all or you're going to start stuttering and stammering. And so um, to, a, to take the, the viewpoint that this doesn't matter is actually useful as a beginner to help you deal with a lot of your beginner mistakes. However, um, at a more advanced level, what you say absolutely does matter um, and being precise and saying the right thing is going to make a big difference. If, if you are just saying random things, you're kind of be limited to beginner intermediate. But the reason why it's taught, it does come from a good sort of intentioned place, which is they're trying to get the beginner out of his head, right? So it's, it's a model, but it's, it's an incomplete model. Okay. Why do I personally love verbal game? First of all, I love verbal game because it is the least risky way to escalate. If you start like touching people, getting physical, trying to make out with people, trying to move them around and you get re resistance or reactions on that, it's very obvious um, to anyone around and it's very obvious to the girl. Um, and so it's going to become an event. Um, whereas when you escalate verbally, especially if you do it the right way and the ways that I'm going to show you on this program um, and all of that, um, then you're not going to have those issues. You're, you're never going to be risk. You're never going to risk rejection there. Um, secondly, verbal game is great because you can build value and comfort at the same time. Whereas a lot of other forms of escalation, you're choosing one or the other, and that's it. Um, the great thing is it's appropriate, and acceptable to any environment, age, or person. It's also great in front of the girl's friends, right? You can escalate verbally. You can you can create plot line, intention, flirtation um, verbally in a way that she doesn't feel like she's being hit on, and nobody else feels like she's being hit on. So you can do it in public, at work, at school, uh, in a club with the friends around and just get away with it. Um, the other thing with a uh, verbal game is it does work across platforms. It's hard to escalate physically an online game or text game, but if you learn good verbal games, you can take it to whatever platform of game you're using. Okay, um, you guys are gonna see on this webinar a lot of really sort of crazy high level stuff that I'm gonna do, and I wanna make the point that this is very repeatable for you, all right? I went through the same stages as you. We're gonna talk uh, in a minute about the, 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 ver the verbal escalation levels. We'll go from level zero all the way up. And I want to tell you, I started at level zero as well. I had a, like, I was at level zero for nine months. I couldn't escalate things verbally or physically for nine months. I had the most platonic, boring dates over and over and over again, the most platonic, uh, platonic boring conversations. So if I can do it, you absolutely can too. Um, so understand this is not something I was born with. This is all learned behavior. I probably started out worse than you. Okay. Very important to note that. All right. Oh, also, I do want to tell you guys, uh, many of you are already aware, I do have my brand new course, Women. Uh, it's coming out February 14th, and I have a special one-time offer for you guys at the end of this program. So stick around for that. It's, it's pretty special. Um, but for the next hour, we're not really going to talk about that. I'm just going to give you like pure content and valuable information. Um, so let's crack into that ASAP. All right. Um, first off, why do guys have issues with the verbal game? Why is it a big sticking point? Biggest thing I think for a lot of guys is they're trying to be perfect. You're trying to say the perfect thing at the perfect time in the perfect way, and you're micromanaging every single word that comes out of your mouth, right? Um, if that's you guys, go ahead and like um, throw a Y in there. Let, let us know that yes, that's you know you're a little bit of perfectionist. You worry too much about what you're saying, that kind of thing. Um, other big one that a lot of guys have is um, that they have no plan for the interaction. OK, um, they they're just talking and talking and talking and they, they don't know when to escalate, how to escalate, what direction to take it in. And they end up in I call it a 30 minute like conversation to know. So they're, they're having a conversation. It's pleasant. And it's nice. But there's just no man to woman happening on any level whatsoever. Um, and then uh, the third one, and this is more of an advanced one. I call this wrong location of focus, which is they're very focused on themselves. They're very focused on what they're saying, what they're doing. Um, rather than what I'm going to suggest, and I'm going to show this to you in more detail later on, um, a big, big point of my model, they should be focused on the girl as opposed to focused on themselves. Because at a high level, game is going to be all about adapting to the girl in front of you and adapting to what she's giving you. Um, so those are the um, those are the big issues. But they all come from one fundamental problem, which is that guys have no idea what actually matters. Guys are trying to be perfect at everything when they don't realize that only about five to 10% of what they're saying actually matters. If they get that five to 10% that matters right, the other 90%, it can be whatever, right? Um, no plan for the interaction. Well, when you know what actually matters, you have a plan. 
um, and then the wrong location to focus. Well, what actually matters is related to the girl. So when you're focused there, you're naturally going to be focused on the girl. So once you have the right model in your head of what actually matters, all of these three problems are going to self-correct. And that's what I'm going to show you guys today. All right. Uh, very quickly, give me a little bit about your experience. So give me a yes in the, uh, in the chat if you have experienced any of these things. Number one, it feels like your lines work. When you do pick up things, it works. It gets a reaction. But as soon as you chill out and have your normal personality, the interaction gets boring. She gets bored. It just loses its charge and its tension. Um, and, and things go south from there. How about if it feels like you're button pushing? Um, and you like everything you're saying, you're like looking for a reaction, looking for a reaction, being try hard. It just feels very unnatural and very weird to you and very awkward. Or how about, this is a very common one. You watch infield from myself, Julian, Tyler, Max, whatever. And you say the exact same thing we say, but it just doesn't work for you. It works for us. doesn't work for you. All right. And we'll talk about why that is the case. Um, or how about the girl likes you for the first 30 seconds and then you can just sort of see the light just go out of her eyes. Right. And then she's like, Oh, never mind. You're not, you're not what I thought you were. Um, you get that sinking feeling of just feeling like you're losing it as it goes. Or finally, this comes up a lot, especially for guys when they're getting to that in between beginner and intermediate. Um, girls call you out as like, oh, you're doing pickup. You're one of those pickup guys. Is that your pickup line? Is that your line? Um, if you're getting that kind of stuff, that's another sign of a lot of verbal game issues. So give me yeses if any of those are your thing. I think you guys are giving me numbers. I like that. That's even more specific. That's awesome. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, cool. So it's good that we're attacking a lot of the issues you guys are actually having. That's, that's very nice to see. Um, okay, so let's look at how verbal game is typically taught. And these are the models that I typically see. Um, level zero is that the words don't matter model, which I already addressed. Level one, um, a little bit more calibrated. And by the way, these are not in terms of what's best necessarily. They're just in terms of how, how calibrated they are. Um, so I'm not saying that necessarily one of these four is, is better or worse than another. Um, but words don't matter. It's completely uncalibrated. There's, there's no even thought going into it. Self amusement. There's at least some thought and direction going into it, but it's still kind of very, very random. Um, cocky funny has a little bit more structure to it. Um, and then can lines and routines are, are the most structured of all. Um, and actually I'll, I'll get into this, have a little bit more of a potential for calibration within them. Um, but all of these do have fundamental flaws and we're going to talk about them individually right now. Um, so what are the problems in general? First is that they tend to be random and directionless. You tend to be kind of all over the place. If you're talking about, you know, the weather and then you're talking about politics and then you're talking about um, your views on this new movie and then all these random things, you're never really taking it in any direction that's relevant to the girl or anything that's going to move it forward in any way. Um, secondly, a lot of times if you don't worry about the words, you're just self-amusing, you're just spitting things out, you're blind to feedback. So the girl's giving you feedback, big tenant of what I, what I teach in all my teachings, but especially in, in uh, women, which is coming out soon, um, is that the woman will tell you how to sleep with her. She literally will tell you how to sleep with her, but you have to know how to listen. And if you're too busy spitting random stuff, you're not listening. Um, and then fundamentally, these last two are very, very, very important. Um, you're treating game as something you do to a girl rather than for her or with her. And what this means is you're against the girl. You're treating her as an adversary and so in any kind of scenario where you win, she has to lose. Girls don't like losing. So you're fundamentally setting up a, a, um, a situation where you're working against yourself. You don't want to be there. Okay. So let's get more specific. <laughs> let's talk about level zero and level one. Very, very commonly taught these days. One, it doesn't matter what you say. It's all about the vibe or maybe that you just got to go self amuse. They're kind of similar kind of concepts. So what's good and what's bad about these? First of all, why is it appealing? Um, first of all, by, and I, I talked about this as far as why people teach that words don't matter. If you rationalize that it doesn't matter, it takes a lot of the pressure off. So for a guy who's completely locked up and doesn't know what to say at all, taking the pressure off and be like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just say anything. Maybe we'll get him unlocked and maybe we'll get him talking. Right. Um, and certainly may get him like not self monitoring as much, not thinking so much about what he's talking. So he can actually, you know, um, express himself without a, a lot of bad body language and verbal tics and stuff like that. Um, second one is it does feel natural. So you don't feel like you have an agenda when talking to girls. And th there's definitely value in that, um, in terms of, cause girls don't want you to have an agenda either. So if you feel like you don't have an agenda, um, then that, that carries through to her view of you. So it definitely has some good points. Um, and the benefits of this, of these methods, one is very useful for getting over fear, very useful for, um, getting you from, I'm scared to even approach to actually talking to a girl. Second thing is because they are very like self-directed, they're very, I'm in my own reality. 
it'll keep you from doing what we call supplicating. Um, supplicating is, for those of you who don't know, it's a behavior that a lot of guys uh, in like sort of mainstream society have, where it's like they'll bend over backwards for the girl, they'll do anything for the girl. Um, and because that shows neediness and it shows a lack of abundance, the girls kind of lose respect for them and just like walk all over them. So, but if you're, if you're completely on your, on your own path or just spitting your own stuff out, it means that by inherently it's very hard for you to supplicate. So those are the great benefits of it. Gets you over your fear. It keeps you from supplicating. So there are definitely good things about those modes of expression. Um, problems with these though. Number one, you lack direction or a game plan. I've seen so many guys with this like random self amusement and they have the most like off the wall, wacky all over the place conversations that just go nowhere, never lead to sex or like one time in a hundred they'll lead to sex because they ha happen to run upon like the right sequence that one particular time. The other huge problem is that, like I said before, you're ignoring the girl and to get to advanced game, calibrating to the girl in the situation is probably the single biggest thing you need to do. Okay, so a lot of good things about these, but there are a couple very definite bad things. Um, let's look at, um, okay, so in conclusion, uh, so they're okay strategies. They're not bad strategies, but only to a point. I consider them good training wheels. If you're getting started, it's a great place to start. It's a great place to like get on that bike and start riding, but they definitely fall short at an intermediate level. And this is why when I go from city to city, program to program, I talk to guys and I ask who's getting to advanced, almost nobody's getting to advanced, is because they're stuck at intermediate because their approach is limited in its scope. Um, let's look at another way that verbal game is typically taught. And this is one I learned a long time ago. This is cocky funny. Cocky funny um, is good for a few reasons. Um, cocky funny, by the way, it just means you're joking and teasing the girl um, very, very regularly. And you're, 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 you don't worry about even in being harsh or being offensive because the fact that you're willing to be offensive, the fact that you're willing to push some buttons, it indicates you're a high value guy. It indicates you have abundance, okay? So I look at cocky and funny as structured self-amusement. So it has the benefits of self-amusement that you're you know, not um, supplicating, those kind of things, um, but it avoids the problem of being directionless because the cocky funny inherently has a little bit of a direction to it. So in that sense, it can be a little bit better than self-amusement. Um, however, there are big problems with cocky and funny. Number one, it's still ignoring the girl. You're still just spitting out the cocky funny lines um, without really thinking too much about the girl, that sort of stuff. Secondly, and this is huge, a lot of guys either they, they just do cocky, funny, cocky, funny, cocky, funny, cocky, funny to the point that it's predictable and obvious what they're doing. And also a lot of guys are not that funny and are a little too cocky or harsh and it just becomes very offensive and they get very, very negative reactions from the girl. So it can be offensive and predictable if it's overdone. Um, here's the big one though, is um, cocky and funny is actually great for the first like minute or two of the interaction right? That, that sort of vibe. But the problem is half an hour in, you want to be building comfort with the girl and getting to know her and opening up to her. And so cocky and funny treats the entire interaction as though it's the first two minutes. It's a, it's a phenomenon I call trying to open your way to sex. You just open and then you open again and you open again, you open again. You're doing the same thing over and over again, uh, even an hour in. And I see this, I, I walk up to a guy who's been you know talking to a girl for like 20, 30 minutes and it still sounds like it's the first minute. Give me a why in the chat if you guys have ever done this one. If you've ever been that guy that like, it seems like you're just opening over and over and over again and you have to constantly restart the conversation because it's just not really going anywhere. If you guys get that, that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, let's see here. Okay, so what are we getting there? We're getting some whys. Let's see what else. A lot of whys, double whys. Okay, cool, cool. Very, very nice. All right. Um, cool. So those are some of the problems with, with cocky and funny for sure. Okay, cool. Um, let's look at one more, uh, how verbal game is typically taught, um, is through can lines and routines. Um, and this is one that was, I did very, very specifically for a very, very long time. Um, and it has probably a little bit more calibration built into it than cocky funny, but, um, it still does fall short in some ways. So let's look at those. Um, let's see. First of all, routines are a little more versatile than cocky and funny. You know, we talked about cocky and funny. You're trying to open your way all the way to sex. Um, well, with routines, you can have routines for comfort. You can have things that happen later on uh, rather than just in the first few minutes. It's a little more versatile, so it can span the whole interaction. And then finally, good routines, if they're well-constructed, they actually do address the female experience. They actually do communicate to a girl on sort of the level of her biology, the level of what she wants, um, and they can create what I call a plot line, which is the girl creating a story in her head. So I call this intrinsic calibration. You're not actually adjusting to the girl in front of you, but there is a sort of inherent calibration <laughs> to what you are doing. 
Okay. Um, so that's a very, very useful thing to have overall. And it's a positive thing about routines. However, routines have some major, major shortcomings, um, which are number one, they're very, very rigid when you do them wrong. Um, you have to know when to do them with any of these things, with anything like cocky, funny or routines or anything structured. If you do them at the wrong time, it's not very good. Right. Um, imagine if you told us a, a joke and you like had really bad timing on every punchline, the jokes just wouldn't be funny. It's kind of like that. When you put a routine at the wrong time, you're out of sync with the conversation. It just doesn't really work. Um, and then finally, big problem with routines. A lot of guys, when they do, do routines, it makes them tend to feel fake. Um, and so they start to attribute that like they're getting success because of um, the routine rather than success because of themselves. It's very, very, very critical that um, you learn to attribute uh, positives to yourself so that you increase your own inherent self-worth. So that's very, very positive. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk to you right now about um, a better solution, which is my solution. I call it the her based approach. Um, you're going to have sort of adding things to the conversation purposefully, and you're going to use structures rather than routines. So um, let me come on screen here for a second. I'm going to talk to you guys briefly about um, this approach. Let me see where I'm at. Yeah. Okay. I'm talk to you guys briefly about this approach. Um, and I want to talk to you guys really, really on screen for this one. So I want this to be a little bit personal. Um, so give me one second. Um, Excuse me. Okay, so a lot of these different ways to um, to sort of like talk and, and, and get going with girls, um, they, the big thing with a lot of them, the, the biggest thing guys run into is their, I don't know what to say. I'm running out of things to say. I don't want to freeze up. I don't want to lock up. And so um, the solution that most guys run into is this simplistic solution of not paying attention to what is up with these, some of these comments. Jesus Christ, the boner so hard. I mean, okay, seriously, okay. Um, what the, like, what is that? Um, I, okay, whatever. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that, guys. I got a little distracted. Uh, so anyway, um, guys, guys are wondering what to say. And so if they get focused on the girl, it puts them in their head. Um, what I want to suggest is that you learn to focus on the girl in a way that doesn't put you in your head and actually does give you things to say, okay? Um, and so I want to talk to you about a technique I call the first unusual thing. And this is a technique I learned from improvisational comedy. What you're doing in improv comedy is you're on stage with someone, you're talking to them, and you notice the first thing that they do that's a little bit strange, and then that becomes the scene that you do. That becomes the, the, what you're going to talk about. So let's bring this to girls. Say that I walk up to a girl and say, hey, what's up? Um, and then every single girl is going to give me something different. Some girls will like be like, what? And like turn away, and then I can, I can comment on it like, oh, you're so shy, blah, 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 blah. Or like maybe I, sh I shake the girl's hand and some girl will shake the hand like very business like, like whoa, very, very business like. Look at you like Miss, miss like um, type A businesswoman. Um, or maybe a girl will be like all light, be like, oh, wow, I feel like a butterfly just landed on my hands, right? Or maybe a girl gets really like happy and giggly, like, wow, you like me already. That's so sweet. And so what I'm doing is my opener usually almost always is just hot. And then from there, I'm immediately playing off what they give me, okay? I'm playing off what they give me and I'm taking the first unusual thing, but every single interaction is unusual. So I always have something unusual to play with. And then at any point in the interaction, if I don't know what to say, or I don't know what to do. What do I do? I focus again on the girl and what she's doing, what she's thinking, what she's feeling. And because there's so much information coming at me, there's always so much to do and so much to talk about. So it's, it's always present there. And I never have to worry about what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Cause it's sitting there right in front of me. And the beauty of talking about the girl like this, is it makes it relevant, right? It's not this random esoteric all over the place conversation. It's specifically about her. And eventually it's about specifically me and her. Okay. Um, and so it's always naturally going to go in a direction. Um, and then in order to kind of explain why this works, um, I want to relate to a story that I read once upon a time. It's actually like pretty good in terms of like creating content and creating um, creativity. Um, so it's from the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I'll, I'll kind of paraphrase it quickly, but Essentially what happened is this teacher assigned his students to basically write a story about anything. That was it. Just like that vague. And he thought it was the easiest assignment. It was just like a writing sample or whatever. Um, and he expected the, the students to come back no problem. But what ended up happening is the two students had a really, really, really hard time coming up with anything because it was too vague and kind of all over the place, right? It was too vague. And so um, they, they focusing on, no, on everything is the same as focusing on nothing and they couldn't zero in on anything. And they hated it. And the, even the efforts they made were very uncreative, very lame and bored. So he gave him another assignment. He said, okay, write a story about our town. Um, and now the story's got a little bit better. So he narrowed it down further. He said, write a story about the street we're on. And the story's got a little bit better. 
And he narrowed it down all the way to write me a story about the top left brick on the building across from this window. And once he did that, once it was very specific and they had a place to start that they were certain of, um, then their creativity could flow from there. And that's what I'm kind of suggesting here is you treat the girl as that top left brick. You treat the girl as that thing in front of you that you're interacting with, focusing on and describing. Um, and it's going to make you creative. It's going to give you always something to say. And the other great thing is it's going to take you out of your head because if you're focused on her, you can't be focused on yourself. So the way that you get out of your head is by being so focused on her that you can't possibly be focused on yourself. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Um, nice. All right. Um, very good. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> there's some super, super, super random comments. Um, all right. Thank you. Great analogy. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Um, Cool. So let's talk a little deeper about this model and exactly how it works. So I've given you kind of the overview, um, but let's go a little deeper. Give me a second to do a screen share for you guys. All right. All right. Um, so what you want to be doing is um, her based approach, focusing on her. Secondly, because you're focused on her, the things you add to the conversation are going to be purposeful. And in fact, if you run out of things to say or don't know what to say, what I suggest you do actually is think, what is the next escalation I would like to have happen? And then do something that is along those lines. So if the next escalation is you'd like to kiss the girl, don't necessarily kiss the girl, but start escalating physically to lead to the kiss. Or if the next escalation is you'd like to take her home, you might start just generally throwing out the idea of going home. So think about what's the next purposeful thing that you could do, and then whatever you say, make it that like kind of divided by 10, one-tenth of that next purposeful action. Now we're always going to have something to do. Um, then in terms of, I still do use occasionally little bits and pieces of routines, but what I normally use is actually structures, which I understand the types of communication that are attractive to girls, um, and I've practiced them over and over again to the point that they're, they're like second nature. So if you think of it like, um, routines would be like, you know, those choreographed fights you see in movies that look really pretty, but they're, they're not really realistic at all. That's kind of like doing routines in game and it, it's not very effective. Um, structures is more like how an MMA fighter would fight, which is he's like practiced the jab, the hook, the takedown, the arm bar, all those kind of things so many times that when the opportunity presents itself, it's just second nature. Um, and that's what I suggest is learn the structure and then at the right time, the right action will just sort of come. Um, so step one is focus on her. You find the first unusual thing and you do that top right brick thing, which is what I just described to you guys. Step two is once you're focusing on her, try and truly understand her. Now, you're never going to have a perfect understanding of her, so understand her as well as possible. And then you want to be focused on giving her an experience. Your job in an interaction is to give the girl an emotional experience, an emotional journey. Okay. And specifically, what is that emotional experience? It's this. It's that number one, you're a high value guy. Number two, that she's winning. Okay, this is so, so, so critical. If she feels like sleeping with you is losing, she won't sleep with you. If she feels like sleeping with you is winning, then she will sleep with you. And then finally, you want to give her the experience that it's just happening. If it seems like you have an agenda, like you have an outcome of I want to sleep with you, and then she gives in, she feels like she's losing or she feels slutty, and that's not good for her self-esteem, that's not good for the narrative in her head. But if she feels like, oh, I met this great guy and we're having a great time and then sex just happens... Um, in that case, it's going to be a much more positive thing for her. So that's what you want to be conveying is that's your high value. She's winning and it's just happening. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you guys an infield where I'm going to do three different methods um, to make it just happen, to make it seem as though it's very organic, as though I have no agenda, as though um, nothing really is going on. But at the same time, I'm going to bring sex into the conversation. So the three methods are this. The first one is I'm going to make her ask. Okay, so I want to bring up this sexual idea um, and I'm going to make her ask for it. You're going to see, I'm like, oh, I don't even want to talk about it, right? Um, and then she's like, what, what? And I go, oh, well, you know, I was going to say this offensive thing. Okay, so you're going to notice that, that I make her ask for it as opposed to just bring it up. Second thing I do, which is really, really powerful, is I disqualify while I'm escalating. So I'm bringing sex up in the conversation, but at the same time, I would talk about how, like, I'm, I'm old and I have a small penis and, I, you know, can't, we couldn't even have sex. So I'm disqualifying, I'm distancing the escalation from actually happening. And um, when, I, when I do this, um, it makes it less threatening for the girl. And if anything, she's likely to focus on the disqualifier rather than the escalation because the disqualifier has a bigger emotional impact. So you'll notice I'm doing that. Um, and then you'll notice the third one, um, and this is only a light version of it, but it's something I call sneaking one past the goalie. And what sneaking one past the goalie is, is where I say so many offensive things at once 
that she can't focus on all of them. So she has to kind of let some of them slide, right? So some of them kind of sneak past the goalie. All right, so give me one second here. Uh, we'll come back up live for you guys. Um, let's see, I'll be live for this section. Uh, conceptually, I'm gonna show the infield in a second, but conceptually, um, let me know if um, that those kind of things make sense, right? So what I'm doing is it's a bunch of different tactics so that I can bring up sex without it being risky, without it being try hard, um, anything like that, all right? So without too much further ado, let's click into the infield. I'll play it for you and then we'll do a little summary afterwards. So here is the infield. Okay, cool, I'm getting the yeses, makes sense. Good, 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 glad to see it. Cool, awesome. All right, uh, let's look at this. Yeah, how old are you? How old am I? Yeah. How old do you think? Um, 28. I'm a little older than that. 30. A little older. 34. I want to say a little older and just keep you guessing, but I am 34. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to keep going and see how long you'd believe. It'd be like 60, 65. <laughs> um, I think I would have walked away before I hit 65. Oh, really? You're an ageist. You're supposed oh, no, to be politically correct. Like... What if I'm just very healthy and well-preserved? Could be it. It's okay, don't worry. But you should have been like maybe a little like grossed out by my age if you were 65. As long as you're mature. Um, but, uh, well, no, but I'm you know, but I'm also not 65, so your maturity level only has to be up to a certain. Oh, oh thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you're that. One. Well, no, but never mind. What? No, don't I was gonna say I'm 65 from the waist down, so don't get any ideas. Okay, so that's where. I just um, made her ask for it, and then that's also where I disqualified while I escalated. Okay, like, I'm useless. The only I'm things I like to be 65. <laughs> it worked out for both of us. Uh, How did you think I wouldn't be about that? Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I'll be very, I'll be very sexually undemanding. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be quick. You won't feel a thing. And uh, sex right, I'm a virgin too. Vodka soda I'm acquainted with. Sarcasm is poor into me. Actually, it's just water with lime in it. Is it really? You're trying to fool and trick innocent boys to getting drunk so you can take advantage of them while you drink water? No, I brought my roofies for that. Oh, okay. um, there, where I said fool and trick young boys, all that kind of stuff about drinking water, all that, that kind of long-winded thing, that's a very small example of sneaking one past the goalie. Um, generally, when I do it, I actually do a lot more and a lot longer, but that's just a little taste of it. Notice I sped up my expression. I said a bunch of different concepts at once very quickly. Um, and that way, it kind of slips through the filter just a little bit. Come on. Right, uh, no, it's actually not. At, at, least, at least promise that you'll cuddle with me and get me in a safe cab home, okay? I mean, you, you said roofies really aren't worth you because you're at 65 from the waist down, so unhelpful right there. Oh, you can mix roofies and Viagra, I suppose. That'd be like an interesting Maybe. little cocktail. I didn't bring my Viagra, so you would have to supply that. That just complicates everything. And we're back know. to I bring everything to this relationship. Oh, you bring everything? Everything. <laughs> All right, so you guys could see uh, those three things. I noticed a couple comments that, uh, you know, the audio wasn't the absolute best. I'm sorry, that, that's just a function of the fact that I'm showing it through screen share. There's not much I can do about that. Um, inside women, where, where this is actually taken from, um, the audio is like completely clear and nice, but it's just the function of being online is the best I can do, unfortunately. Um, but again, hopefully you guys could hear and see um, those things coming about. The other one I want to point out, um, and the um, important thing um, with... Any, any kind of lines or routines or structure that you're using is using it at the right time. So how did I know in that case that it was good to escalate right there? Well, when she said, um, if you were 65, I would just leave right now. That sounds like a shit test, right? It sounds like a negative thing. But if you're listening properly, it's not. Because on, under what premise or what context would she leave if I was 65? It's under the context that she's thinking of me sexually. If she's thinking of me as just a friend, it wouldn't matter that I'm old or that I can't have sex with her and that kind of stuff. So actually, even though it sounds like a negative, it actually is a massive positive, and it allows me to know that she's thinking of me in that category, and that she's thinking of me in a very, very positive way, okay? So this is a very, very interesting thing. I told you, girls will tell you how to sleep with them. There, she's telling me that she's ready for escalation, except you have to be a little bit clever to hear it. You have to actually like look beneath the lines. So instead of thinking, this is very key, instead of thinking, what did she say? <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> wow, excuse me. Instead of just thinking, what did she say? I want you to think, why did she say it, right? What did she say and why did she say it? Once you, you get the, the why, 
then a lot of things are going to get a lot better for you. All right. Um, so <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to show you. Wow. <clears throat> I'm going to show you one more piece of infield, actually two more pieces of infield here. Um, but the next one here um, is going to be me going for a kiss. And I'm going to show you how I go about going for a kiss the right way. Um, let me give you a little synopsis of it. Show you how I go about going for a kiss the right way. So that's the three methods that just happened. Next one is getting a kiss by letting her win. Most of you guys probably, when you go for the kiss, um, it's something very try hard. It's something where you're like, oh God, I hope this works. Um, and maybe it's like forceful. Sometimes you even maybe trick her to get to kissing you or it's like a sudden thing or whatever. Um, and it's definitely a physical escalation, but it might not escalate the interaction, right? And if you get rejected, it looks really bad. So I'm gonna show you um, how I usually go for kisses and it's kissing by letting her win. So first I wanna point out the timing of it. The timing of this kiss is gonna be when there's kind of a pregnant silence and she's a little bit nervous, right? So it's, a, and, and she, she's kind of acknowledged that um, either I think previously in the interaction or right before that um, I'm kind of a high value guy, I have my life going pretty well. So it, it's, it's a positive frame for me and she's a little nervous and it's a little bit silent. So there's, there's that tension there. Um, but the other thing I wanna point out is the narrative around the kiss, both before the kiss, which I'm like, don't be insecure. Um, and then after the kiss where I'm also, you know, don't be insecure, I like you, it's totally cool. What ended up happening here actually is that she's a really pretty girl, but um, she had like, just like a weird, a weird thing with her hands that she's like insecure about. And so I kind of called out, I, I noticed that when I, I like took her hand, it was like massaging, and I noticed she like kind of like cringed a little bit. And I, I assessed what was going on and assessed that she was insecure about her hands. Um, and so that's um, where I went with this and, and how I knew to do it. I'm gonna show you guys the infield. The audio on this one should be a, a little bit better than the last one. Um, it's more of a, a little bit of a quieter environment. Um, but uh, let's look at the kiss and then I will come on and break it down for you guys afterwards. Yeah. To be honest, I wouldn't even notice it until you called my attention to it. Ready? Yeah. I was just thinking like you were typing and so your hands were probably sore, so I was trying to like, you know, help them feel better. No. Don't be shy. That's weird. What? <laughs> What's weird? Okay. I said don't be shy? Yeah. You don't need to. Just be, no, just be you. Okay. okay. If I like you as you, great. If I don't like you as you, then I'm stupid. In your opinion. <laughs> and same, if, like you, if you don't like me as me, then I'm like, oh, she's dumb. Whatever. Fair enough? So far, so good. So far, so good? Well, thank you. I'm glad you like me. I mean, we should take our time and get to know each other. But, like, seriously. Like, nothing to be insecure about. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm comfortable, which is weird because I don't know. All right, so you can see, um, so basic summary, right? <clears throat> um, don't be insecure. We go ahead and kiss, and then I, I go more deep into it. I'm like, don't be insecure, just be you, which is a great line, by the way. Just be you is an amazing, amazing line in game. And then she ends by saying, um, no, it's okay. I feel comfortable, which is weird because I barely know you, right? So she's giving me a lot of the right sort of uh, things, right sort of feedback, all of that, okay? Um, so again, Kissing under not the wrong premise, but the right premise, a premise that makes me a higher value, that brings us closer, and which maintains the sexual tension rather than taking away from it, right? And someone else said, and it's totally non-tryhard, extremely non-tryhard, right? Um, it's not like I'm kissing and doing something to her. What I'm doing is I'm kissing and offering her a little look into my life, a little bit of, um, you know, um, I, I accept you, you can come up to my level, that sort of a thing, all right? Um, so the next thing we're going to show is from the same interaction. It's going to be after we've we've left the bar. We're now outside going to – we're going to go grab um, wine and then go back uh, to my place. Um, and um, an interesting thing comes up where she, uh, she – she'd said earlier she doesn't like the wine here. Um, and I thought it was because she didn't like wine. Turns out it's because um, she's she's kind of uh, – she's like a, like a poor student kind of. She's a pretty girl but poor student. And so, um, so just like buying wine on a regular basis isn't that affordable for her. And so that comes up. And so now I'm going to bring up the idea of the, a lot of people would call it provider frame of like, you know, don't worry, I'll get the wine. I will take care of this. Don't you're in my world, that kind of thing. Um, and a lot of people would think that's very provider. It's putting you in the boyfriend frame. But the thing that I do here is I focus on the experience, right? I don't focus on, Hey, I'm a big man and I can buy you shit and show off for you. I focus on let's have an experience. Let's have the sexiest, most fun, most engaging experience. Um, and that's what I'm really into, right? 
Um, and so that is very lover. Being in the moment, focusing on the experience is very much the lover frame. So I'm able to convey success. Like a lot of guys are like, I can't convey I'm successful with girls because then just, they just want like me to be a boyfriend. They don't want to have sex with me. Um, no, no, you can convey your money. You can use that you have money. You can use that you have sex, but you have to do it the right way. Yeah, you're telling, someone said you're telling a story. You're telling a story of you. You're telling a story of you as this sensual person, this passionate person, this lover of experiences. Um, and that is what's really going to make you stand out and to fit that lover frame and all of that, okay? Um, so without further ado, let's have a look at this. Uh, or beer if you'd like. No, wine or beer. I'm okay with wine. Up to you. I'm okay with wine. I really like wine, but it's But it's like, it's like terrible. Oh, expensive? Oh, that's no problem. That's not a problem. I thought you just like hated American wine or hated yeah, the wine here. Like, I used to pay like three, three bucks a glass and here it's like 10. So I'm gonna like tell you right now. What? So you got like all right. So it's like right now. Whenever you're with me, this is not like me trying to be like Mr. Rich guy or whatever. But like, if there's something that's fun to do but a little more expensive, <laughs> or something that sucks to do that's not as expensive, let's do the fun thing. Okay. I, I will. I will. I will take care of you, Miss Poor. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. Like I've worked hard in life so that I can have fun experiences. Thank you. So don't ever like. I'm not trying to be like Mr. Like whatever guy, but like. If it like literally is you want to do something, but it's like, especially like a bottle of wine doesn't cost that much, right? Like, yeah, for you, I was not used. Okay, okay. You're in my world right now, okay? <laughs> Enjoy yourself. I feel like I will like your word. Yeah? Yeah. I like the Todd Gray comment. I've gotten that one a lot. I like, are you the, are you whatever gray? And I don't know, is it Christian gray or whatever in real life? Yeah, I've gotten that comment a lot. Um, but yeah, that, that is actually a big part of it, which is taking the girl on an emotional journey. Because if you look at things like Fifty Shades of Gray, why is it that that's so appealing? It's because you are taking a girl on that emotional journey. And that's the primary thing you want to be focused on in game, right? Um, I've kind of given you guys a, a tiny little sample of it, but this is like the tip of the iceberg. That's uh, what I can teach you guys in like, you know, under an hour and whatnot. Um, but I go far, far, far deeper on, on this in, uh, in women. Um, and, and just like the, the entire scope of game changes when you do put the girl first and when you do focus on her. Um, the fundamental shift between intermediate and advanced is that <clears throat> It, beginner intermediate guys are so focused on their own emotions, their own internal dialogue, and they're trying to get an action from the girl. They're trying to get the girl to do something and they're focused on their own internal emotions, right? <clears throat> and when you are in that frame, then um, number one, you're in your head by, by definition, you're focused on your emotions. Number two, by focusing on trying to get an action from the girl, you're inherently um, reaction seeking, you inherently have an agenda which is one of the most unattractive things that you can have for a girl. <clears throat> the fundamental shift then to advanced is you flip it. So instead of being focused on her actions, what you want her to do, you focus on her emotions, what you want her to feel, okay? And then you let the feeling become what you want her to do. It's sort of inception. So what you're doing is you're focusing on her feelings and you're doing these other things, bringing sex up into the conversation like I did in that first clip, and um, then she takes those emotions and takes that idea and runs with it. And she starts doing the actions of her own own volition. Like she starts escalating on you. She starts moving the interaction forward. If any of you saw um, my previous webinar earlier this week where the girls actually were taking me home or actually asking me to go home with them or asking me to sleep with them in the bathroom, um, it's that kind of thing. That's, that's the end effect, which is that um, they you, you motivated their emotions and then they took the action themselves. If they take the action themselves, there's no resistance. There's no um, miscalibration. The escalation happens at exactly the right pace. So that's why it's so important to focus on her emotions. By focusing on your actions, one, you're focusing on what you can do and control. And whether you're in your head, out of your head, whatever you're feeling, you can still always take action. Um, and number two, you're doing what's actually practical and what actually matters in the real world, which is the action part of it. All right. So that's the fundamental shift, um, which is instead of your emotions to motivate her actions, it's your actions to motivate her emotions. And once you get that fundamental shift, everything is going to change, right? And so you can see this approach of focusing on the girl, it does a lot of things for you. Number one, you always have something to say because you have her in front of you as the thing to talk about, right? Whatever unusual thing she's doing, whatever thing you'd like to do to her or whatever escalation you'd like to have happen next, 
that is the topic of conversation. Now, if it is escalation, if it is what you want to do to her, you're going to have to do it in smaller increments, but you always have that subject of conversation right in front of you. So you literally always have something to say, right? You, you know what you want, you know the direction, you have something to say. Um, but secondly, everything you say when it's about her is going to be relevant, is going to be on topic, is going to not be all over the place, et cetera. Um, and it makes the escalation much, much, much easier. And then finally, um, and this is an interesting phenomenon, whenever you're talking about someone or you're making them the subject, making them the center of attention, it inherently tends to put them kind of in their head a little bit. It put, makes them start thinking. It makes them go internal. And if they're in their head and you're out of your head, you're the higher value person. Excuse me. So there's all these different things going on. Um, but beyond that, um, if you get the verbals right, if you learn these verbal structures, you learn these patterns, um, that's going to help you tremendously as well. Okay. Um, so quickly, uh, with what we've covered so far, um, how many of you guys, uh, feel like, um, this pretty interesting information feel like you learned, uh, quite a bit there, right? In terms of what are the shortcomings of the, the traditional models, the self amusement models? What are the traditional models of the canned routine type model or the, the limitations of, of those models, the canned routines and whatnot? Um, and then also very, very importantly, this fundamental shift to calibrating to the girl, right? Um, I always look at it as calibrating to the girl is the absolute epitome of game. It's like it, I played sports my whole life, right? And in playing sports, you, you develop a strategy to go into the game, but then you look at what the other team is doing and you adjust to it. If you just never adjusted to the other team, you'd be a very, very shitty team at that particular sport. It's the same thing in game. Now, you're not opposing the girl in game. But if you're not interacting and going off of her, you have major problems. Okay, cool. So, okay, so you guys can see that uh, you guys got a ton of really, really good content. Now, that's obviously just the tip of the iceberg. This is like what I could teach you guys in um, a little less than an hour. So um, it's it's not, you know, this is something I put 15, what, 17 years into learning, 15 years into teaching. And I've been working for basically the entire last year to put this into a cohesive structure so that it, it is teachable um, someone says, Todd, what's the most effective way to learn this way? Um, I'm actually going to, ideally, actually, I'd like to show you guys that in a minute. How many of you guys would love to see, um, an effective way that I can go about showing you how to learn game this way? If I were to show you inside how I design a course for this, um, what are the elements you need to learn? What's the process? That kind of stuff. Give me a why if you guys would love to see something like that. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. We're getting some yes. Cool. All right. Awesome. Lots of yeses. All right, good. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you uh, a glimpse inside my brand new program, Women, which um, I've been so excited to put out for so, so, so long. Um, let me do a little screen share for you guys so you guys can see it, and then we will go to it. Um, one second. All right. Um, full screen that. Okay, so this is... The homepage of, of women, you're welcome to women. We have all the topics over here on the on the right side um, to deal with um, what is a woman, all that kind of stuff. So we start with, let's say for example, uh, let's look at calibration. So look at calibration. Okay, so we have introduction, different facts about calibration, different ways to calibrate, advanced models, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's, Maybe calibration. If we go on a different topic, let's look at um, honest signals. Honest signals are an idea in, in evolution for what the girl will respond to the most and what she will treat as being the most meaningful facts you can give her. So what are they? Why do they matter? How do you know like how is she reading your honest signals? What makes an honest signal? Um, different perspectives, philosophical on honest signals, some, some kind of advanced hangups, and then how you can use this phenomenon to your advantage. Um, so this is um, basically the core modules of, of women. I call them the epiphany modules because every single thing in them is completely new and has never been seen or taught in the way that it's taught before. Some of it is completely has never been taught in any way ever. Um, so these are the epiphany modules. Um, it's over 80 videos in total. Um, it's like somewhere between 80 and 100. I don't know the exact number, but just a ton of videos um, goes deep on all these concepts in women. Um, so that's, that'll give you the paradigm. Every single one of these videos should be a paradigm shift for just about anybody in game. Um, so that's 80 to 100 paradigm shifts um, that you're going to experience. Next, and this is my favorite part of the entire program, the infield. Now, you guys have seen infield before, um, but uh, you've never seen infield like this. 
What I do with the infield and women is I break it down four ways. First, we have the uncut infield. Um, so people have asked me for this a lot. They want to see the flow. They want to see the long sets. And I've left a lot of the sets in women long, so you get a lot of context because game, it's all about context when things are happening. So we have the uncut set first. Then we have what we call the classic breakdown. Uh, this is what you will have seen in other uh, programs where I'm breaking down the tactics, the intentions, the escalation, the direction I'm taking it in. Um, so that's, that's the breakdowns that you've seen before. That's the classic breakdown. And then I go really deep. Next up, we have the women breakdown. So here what I'm doing is I'm breaking down the footage from her perspective. Instead of breaking it down from me and what I want and what I'm thinking, I'm asking myself, what does she want? What is she thinking? Who is she? What's her blueprint? What's going on in her head? How is she reading me? Um, what is she? What is what is her plan for the night? What are her obstacles? What are her challenges? What is she afraid of? So it's the entire interaction broken down, kind of in reverse, broken down from her perspective. Um, and then finally, we have the verbal game breakdown. And this is where I go crazy, crazy deep. In the verbal game breakdown, I literally break down every single thought I have in my head about the words, why I use this particular word, why I paused here. When she says something, what I read her to be actually saying, how it helps me read her blueprint, um, all that kind of stuff. So I go crazy, crazy, crazy deep, right? Um, so as you guys can see, we have seven different infields broken down four different ways. So that's 28 total infields um, that you guys can go through. Um, these are, this is one of the shorter ones, like 32 minutes, 40 minutes, 51 minutes for the breakdowns. Um, some of the infield breakdowns are over two hours individually. So you have layers and layers of breakdown that just, it, it's incredible, insane depth. It's literally everything that I'm thinking in game all presented to you. So that's the infield. And, and again, infield, like you've never seen it before, um, where you're actually literally getting inside my head. Every single thought, every single thing that's going on, I'm showing you. Next up, we have the attractive man matrix, which I also absolutely love. <clears throat> attractive man matrix. So here's, I've kind of completed the, the, the survey part. I'll show you that in a second. But basically, I've broken down what is attractive to a bunch of different categories. Um, basically, there's three major categories. There's attractiveness, there is lifestyle, and there is game technique, right? And within each of these, there's these different characteristics, opening, trustworthiness, problem solving, uh, plausible access, uh, which means how, how uh, easily you, you have girls in your life without seeming to try, aliveness, attentiveness, all these different characteristics. So <clears throat> basically, you'll get a rating for each and every one of these, and then there are missions to deal with every single one. So you'll know like where you're weak, then you can do the missions in that area to round out and get a little bit stronger. But how did I personalize this? Let me show you this. So we'll go and retake the survey real fast. So we'll just throw in some random numbers. Say you're 25 years old. Say you've been with like, uh, oops. Um, say you've been with like 20 girls. Um, five from there, five from there, uh, five from there, five from there. Why not? Um, let's say you've been there. Um, let's say there. All right. Um, let's say you're, uh, okay. You're there. Okay. So let's submit the survey and let's see what we get. So then what will happen is you'll get points to assign in each of these categories. So you get like 35 points here, 40 points here, 20 points here, based on um, where you've had success and, and what things you have going for you in life. And then you can allocate them to each of these. And there'll be, there's a summary um, separate from this page, but there's a summary where um, it'll tell you exactly what these characteristics mean. So you know exactly how to assign them. All right, so you get your points, you can assign from your personal experience, how you would allocate those points to yourself. Um, let me allocate them all so that we'll actually get results here real fast. Uh, yeah, I clicked through. I have to, sorry, it's giving me one second just to fill it in. So I make sure that we get like a real result on the next screen. All right. And then we'll go. So once we have all the points allocated to our attributes, we'll go ahead and save it. And then we will go ahead and we will get, again, our personal assessment of where we're at with these missions. And each of these missions deal with that particular attribute. Some of them are missions that you can do right away, right there in an hour. Some of them are habit forming missions that will help you for months or years to come, right? So this personalizes the course to you and gives you the ability um, to really, really work on the areas that are the most effective for you with my personal guidance every step of the way. So that's the attractive man matrix. And that combined with the infield and combined with the modules makes up the, the core of the women curriculum. However, uh, we do have some other things for you. 
uh, opening mastery um, because it's so, so, so important that you be able to get into conversations with women in order to be able to practice and to um, that you open the right way so you're setting the right frames from moment one. So opening mastery is a three hour long course um, where I teach every single thing. I'll play this for you guys a little bit. Um, three hour course where I teach you inside, inside out everything I know about opening, all, right. all that kind of stuff. Cool. Uh so we'll have um, B when you do get positive indicators curriculum there's infield in this oh. um, exercises all kinds of different ways for you to learn within opening mastery it's basically the most comprehensive and best course on opening that I've ever created we also have other bonuses female archetypes manifest so I talk about different types of girls calibration manifest so I teach you specifically how to calibrate and what the levels of calibration are in the techniques toolbox where all the different forms and ways that I escalate, which you'll, you'll, you'll see in the modules, I show you my particular examples of exactly what I say to do all of those different things, okay? So that is women in a nutshell. Um, pretty comprehensive. Uh, it's Of all the courses I've ever created, it is probably the most comprehensive and the one that I've like put my heart and soul into more than any other. So we have women here, on top of which, um, there are a couple of things that come with women, which is, first of all, we have eight weeks of live debrief with me. And how this works is every single week on Friday, um, probably like Thursday to Friday, like midnight, like basically Thursday, um, I'm giving you a mission that is going to be specific to what I want you to learn and work on. And these are missions that will work for you at whatever level you're at. We have beginner, intermediate, advanced missions. Um, we'll send you out in the field for that weekend with that specific mission. And then after you do that mission, you're going to meet with me on a live training that Sunday so that you can go over the mission. You can do these missions for day game or night game. It doesn't matter. Um, and again, I'm going to talk with you. It's going to be limited to just the people who signed up. Um, and I'm going to sit there and literally answer every single question. I'll, I'll stay until you've gone over your missions. You understand, you know, what your progress is, what you need to work on, um, what you need to adjust, that kind of stuff. So I'm really there for you every single week for eight weeks straight. Um, as you implement these new concepts in women, as you start to look at game from the girl's perspective um, and learn how to really address things from that advanced way of looking at things. So that's eight weeks of live de debrief, 16 sessions, missions, and debriefs. And it literally will be like a university class where I will be there for you every single week and we'll meet and, and have our session. Then beyond that, we have the eight-week interactive relationship course because I've been wanting to teach a relationship course for a really long time. But the problem is every relationship is different. So I didn't want to put up this prescriptive course. I want to really interact with you guys. So every single week, I'm going to be getting together with you guys. I'm going to have a curriculum, um, a topic in relationships that I want to talk about um, that I think is most useful to you guys. And then we'll spend um, the second part um, addressing your questions with regards to that topic and how to handle it. And then your general questions on relationships. So, and we'll be talking about monogamous relationships, non-monogamous relationships, uh, threesomes, multiple long-term relationships how to deal with fights in relationships, how to have the relationship on your own terms, how to, how to have the sex life you want, all those different types of topics we're going to address. And you're going to have me giving you feedback every step of the way. You'll be able to ask me questions every single step of the way. So that's the eight-week relationship course, which comes as a part of women as well. So that's what's inside women. I cannot tell you how proud and happy I am to finally be able to share that with the world. This has been a labor of love. It really is my game, my mind, put into a product like I've never done before. <laughs>